spirit of the Lord is such that anyone can reach out to him. Is that right? The Lord is such that any time, day or night, He's there. Amen. 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 Stand with me, everybody. Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of Christ that dwells among us and in us, that brings us together. That we are the body of Christ in whom you dwell. Thank you, Lord, for the work you're doing in the earth today. Thank you, Lord, for gathering your people from all over the world. Everywhere your spirit is moving and people are finding the Lord. They're coming to you, Lord. You're gathering together your people, getting them ready for the greatest event the world has ever known. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help us to always be aware of that and be looking for you. We're looking for you, Jesus. We're not looking for anything else. We're looking for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for the promise you've given us. Thank you for the hope that we have in Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you're going to help us along the way until you come. And everybody say amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Let me read to you scripture from the book of James. You can be seated. Thank you for coming this morning. Uh, you picking it up all right on that there, John? Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay tied up here or not. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The book of James, the fifth chapter. Verse 7. James speaks to the church as concerning their problems they may have being concerned about those who have mistreated them Are those who have robbed them, those who have done them wrong, it must have been of, of great concern. Nobody likes to be done wrong. But we're living in a world today as it grows worse and worse where corrupt men will grow worse and worse. They will lose all side of morals and good manners, fair dealing. Become more greedy. Wanting more money more for themselves and less for you. Well, we see it every day, don't we? 
especially those that's in politics. We see a lot of that going on. Where so many are only concerned about their own agendas and not about the people. And so we feel the brunt of that. We feel it's stinging. We feel it in our pocketbooks, the gas pump, grocery store. But you know what? The Lord has promised you He will never leave you. The Lord has promised you that He will supply your every need. Regardless of what corrupt men may do to try to steal from you, God doesn't base His, His blessing upon how the economy is going. God's promises are not based upon the, the word of some men. It's His own word. Amen. His own word, God has promised. And so, don't be too alarmed. Don't be apprehensive. Don't wish for more than you need. Be content with the things you have and be thankful and give God praise and thanksgiving for all that you have today. And don't complain. It's easy to complain when you don't have all the things you think you want. Be happy that God has given you what you have at home, automobiles, food, shelter, clothing, all the necessities of life, and more. You this morning, the children of God, are blessed people. The world will go on being the world. Mm -hmm. And corrupt men will become more corrupt and gain more in this world. But in the end, it will catch up with them. Those who forget God. But those of us who remember the Lord... have no need we have no want for the Lord is our shepherd Amen, Amen. and he leads us beside the still waters and in green pastures he gives rest to our souls so we have, praise God, we have great contentment, great peace, great rest in the Lord. So don't be disturbed by things that's going on around you. If the price of gasoline goes to ten, fifteen dollars a gallon, the Lord will provide a way. No matter what the cost, God's got so much riches and glory. He shall supply all your need according to that. Not according to how the economy is going, according to His riches and glory. And God will give you favor in this world. How many believe that? 
He's never failed me yet, and he won't fail you. He never will. He never has. He never will. He never has. He never will. He never has. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, James comes across the same problems in his day. But he says in verse 7, be patient. Be patient. Therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. The early and the latter rain. There are times and seasons that the Lord has made. God made it that. God made things to grow. In the beginning, when the Lord created the heavens and the earth, remember, He created everything. All the animals and the fish and the fowls. And man, you see, he blessed them. He blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, fill the earth. God's intention was to bless his creation. That is one of the first things we read about our giving to God in Revelation. When John beholds and sees those who are giving praise and worship to God on the throne, the first thing they say is blessing. Blessing and honor and glory be unto Him who sits upon the throne yes. and unto the Lamb which liveth forever and ever. Blessing comes first. God always wants there to be a blessing. But sin and rebellion brings cursing. Amen? Amen. And so God created a way to bring forth that blessing on the earth when He sends the rain. When He talks about the former or the early rain, usually in October through December, the earth receives its rains for a purpose. It's to soften the land. When the snows come, the rains come, the earth is softened and made ready, kept ready for when the latter rain comes in the spring. Amen? Amen. As I was meditating upon this, the Lord began to give me a picture of Christ who when He came to this earth came to a world cold barren dry and he himself 
was like the rain coming down. Christ began to bring the blessing of God to a cursed world. He began to soften the land to receive the seeds. Do you know when Christ comes into your life, God has prepared your heart to receive. Whenever you cry out to the Lord, whenever you seek God, it's because God has already began the softening of your hearts. Amen. It is the work of the Lord, not the work of man. Just as in the beginning when God created everything, He created the land and the birds and the beasts and, the, and man and all that's in it and blessed it with the rains of heaven because sin when it came the ground was cursed so God blessed it with the rains to soften the land to feed the land to water the land so that it would bring forth it would bring forth that which God proposed, what He purposed to do in the beginning. Amen. Whenever things may look bleak, God makes a way. Amen. Whenever things look impossible, God makes it possible. Amen. And only God can do that. Nobody can do that for you but God. Nobody can change your heart but God. Nobody can do in your life what needs to be done. Only God can do that, but He can do that. So take heart. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. So Jesus coming... was the beginning of the promises of God made to Abraham, fulfilled in Christ to all who believe. The Scripture tells us that we are not called to be cursed, but to be blessed. So as I was thinking about the rains coming early in the year, or late in the year, I, I, began, to, I began to question, well, what about during the winter months, the cold and winter months? And as I began to think about it, The Word of God has come to us down through the centuries. Amen. The cold and bleak and dry centuries. Yes. But the rain the former rain has come. And the Lord has been waiting. Well, I like that. 
the light yeah but the light had already come the blessing had already been given then where is the blessing where is the light through all those years through all that time Lord where is it but the Lord is waiting he hasn't forgotten his creation God is not ignorant of what has happened in this world Amen. you see but what God does is totally apart from what the world is doing what God is causing to happen may not be immediately seen by man. But God is working nevertheless. Hallelujah. It's like in the wintertime when you look out there and see the trees with all the leaves off of it. And everything looks dead. But God is still working. And those roots are reaching way down in the earth. Amen. And the life is still in that tree. Hallelujah. Even though its leaves may have faded and fallen off, the life is still thriving somewhere in the tree. God is waiting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the beginning when Jesus came, oh, what a great revival began to take place. There was excitement in the air. There was something new that came into the world. Jesus started it. And boy, did he run into the devil trying to stop it. But you can't stop what God has ordained. The devil may try to stop this little church, but he can't stop what God is doing in this church. There may be false prophets and false uh, uh, whoever come along and say what they want to say, but they're not going to stop what God is doing. You may drag your heels and drop out, but God has not dragged His heels and He's not going to drop out of the picture. Hallelujah! God is not going to drop out of this thing. He's not going to quit on us. We may quit on God, but He ain't going to quit on us. If you don't want to be a part of what God is doing, then go your way. But I want to join up with Him and be a part of what He's doing. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 So when Jesus came again to preach and heal the sick and know all that He did and, and, and all that happened through Him, man, it caught on fire. It, everybody it caught on fire with what Jesus was doing. And the disciples and apostles went out and began to preach just like he preached and began to do the very things he was doing. And the whole world was turned upside down. That's what the scripture says. Man, these people are turning the world upside down. 
But that's what it needs today. Somebody needs to turn the world upside down. Or the right side up, amen. The right side's been down long enough. It's time to get it back up on top. Amen. So we look through the ages. The former reign has been given. God is softening. He's preparing. Hallelujah. And let me tell you one other thing. I believe that somewhere in some place in some little corner of the world God has always had somebody that called upon His name. God has always had somebody with all the darkness and ignorance that has surrounded the world, there's always been somebody somewhere. Hidden down there, you know, behind some closed door, there's a little grandma praying and calling on the Lord. There's somebody down there somewhere that's speaking up for Jesus. Somehow, some way, God is causing it to happen. And praise God, it ain't going to stop what God is doing. And no matter what happens, the conditions in the world, what God is doing is going to happen anyhow. No matter how bad the conditions may be in the world, God has sent the rain. And he sent it. He sent it because God is looking for the fruit. God is looking for that thing to grow, to come forth. And it may not seem as if anything's happening. But look what happened in the 14th century, 15th century, the 16th century, when suddenly the rains came again. Hello. Where are we living today? Where are we at today? We are living in the time of latter rain. And we are living in the time where things are really growing and producing because the rains have come again. And so where are we at, Lord? He's waiting for all the crops <laughs> to come in. It looked bleak there for a while in the world. But God has been waiting now for 500, 600, 700 years since the latter rain. And it's come and He's waiting. And the crops have been growing what is the Lord doing? He's waiting. He's waiting. So what the Lord, what has the Lord got to do with me? He's watching you and He's waiting on you. Maybe you'll come to something. <laughs> He's waiting because He knows you're going to grow. Yes, hallelujah. He's waiting because He knows the condition that you're in. But He's giving the blessing of His, of his reign, the blessings. Come on now. Hallelujah. Ezekiel said, there shall be showers of blessing. Where are we at? 
Lord, I feel like, I feel like I'm, under the, I'm under the spout where the glory comes out. I feel like I'm under the reins of His blessings. And what, what for? Why is He doing that? Somebody says, well, I don't act like, we don't act like those Pentecostal people down the street. Or we don't go to church much, or we, you know, well, well, we go down here sometime, or over there sometime, or, you know, that not have much to do with church. That's, well, that's okay. If it's not in your heart to go, then you won't go. So, but what, 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 it, 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 is it just all about going to church anyway? You need to go to church. You need, now don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Seeing how the evil day is coming, you need the strength of one another. That's why we need to come together. At least once a week. But what is the purpose of all? What is the purpose of, of, of church? What is the purpose of how we are when we come to church? Or, or what is the purpose of the mindset that we have about church? What's it all about? Why is it we want to come to church? Well, we want to come to church to show off our new clothes. We want to come to church just to say hello to somebody. We want to come to church just because it's a traditional thing to do or it's a good thing. What are we coming to church for? What, what is this all about? What is the Christian life all about? It's about one thing. You have received the blessing from the Lord and you're growing and getting ready for somebody to come along and pick you up and get you out of here. You're waiting for an angel to come down from heaven and pluck you up and say, it's time for you to go. Let's get out of here. Hallelujah. After all, what does a farmer plant seeds for? He waters the ground, what for? So that what he plants will grow. And why does he want it to grow? Because man, he likes to eat. Here we are back in food again now. Yes, sir, we're an eating bunch around here. <laughs> Where did we get our fellowship hall? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Why do we want the crops to grow? Are we just going to leave it sitting in the ground? No. Let it rot? <laughs> We call it harvest time, don't we? Yes. Together in the fruit. Together in the works of our hands, of our labor. God is waiting. And while He's waiting, his plan, His plan for what is happening, everything that's going on, God is seeing to it that everything is going according to schedule. What do I need over here? What do I need over there? Need a little nutrients over here? Need a little digging around and weeding over here? When God looks out at his, at his crops, He wants to see a beautiful crop, a beautiful uh, uh, crop growing. No weeds. Everything nourished. Having all the water it needs. Having everything 
to supply, to supply everything that, that's needful for a beautiful crop. God's not going to leave us here. Say, what, is, what, is it, what, is, what do I need to be a Christian for? Because one day, we're going to leave. Yes, hallelujah. 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 All you beautiful Brussels sprouts are going to leave. All you beautiful tomatoes are going to leave one of these days. When God grows his corn, he grows it tall and strong and beautiful and the ears are full. When God sees everything's ready, it's time to harvest. It's time to gather together. The Lord is waiting. We talk about us waiting upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. He will renew your strength. And all the while, think about this. All of those, all, all of these years that you've prayed and sought the Lord. All through the years that you've read your Bible and gone to church and been faithful to do what God told you to do. Listen to me. Of all the experience you had in things of God in your life. It's beautiful. But all the while, God has been waiting. He's waiting for the right moment. Hello. Amen. You're not just a beautiful crop just to look at. God's got a plan. God has a purpose. There will be the former rain and the latter rain. The seed has been sown. Jesus said the seed is the word of God. The seed has been sown. Is coming up. Everything is beginning to flourish. It was dark for a while. Didn't seem like anything was happening. But God is preparing the world. He's preparing this earth for a time of great harvest. Souls when Jesus, remember when Jesus was here, he told his disciples, he said, men say that in three months comes harvest. But lift up your eyes and look. For the fields are white already. For harvest. Jesus could see that in his day that there was a great harvest. I believe His coming and what happened at that time in the church is the former reign. But the Word of God has gone forth into all the earth. It has been planted on every continent down through the ages since He came, the Word of Jesus has been spread abroad. And in those dark hours, you think nothing is happening. But all the while, God is working. All the while, God is moving. All the while, let's see, see God's timetable is not like ours. When Jesus came, let me, let me read you a scripture, another scripture. Ho 
Hosea chapter 6. Hallelujah. I can find it through all these little bitty books. Hosea chapter 6. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, he will heal us. He hath smitten us, he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and in the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. What does that remind you of? Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and as the former rain upon the earth. When Jesus was here, he was a rain sent from heaven to water the dry and thirsty land. Do you hear me? And as Christ began to speak and preach his word, people began to hear. Many believed. Suddenly, Christ begins to reap. Suddenly, Christ begins to gather in his sheep, his people. Israel, for the most part, was blinded. But he said, everyone who hears my voice are my sheep. Christ came gathering. Christ came blessing. Christ came and took our curse. Did you hear me? Everyone that sins against God is cursed. Cursed is every man who continueth not to do that is written in all the book of the law. Cursed is every man. So Jesus Christ, when he came, took upon himself that curse. The curse that was upon every man. For disobeying the Lord. He took upon himself that curse and gave us that blessing. Hallelujah. Cursed is everyone who hangs upon a tree. Jesus was cursed upon that cross for our sakes. He took that curse and in return, he gave us his blessing. We shall know the Lord as the rain that comes down from heaven. Every soul needs the rain. Every person needs the rain. Every nation needs the rain. Every field needs the rain. Everywhere in every place needs the rain to soften, to nourish, to grow. Why do we need Jesus? Because we need the blessing. When God called Abraham, he called to bless him. I will bless you and blessing I will bless you. James says we are not called, we are called for a blessing. 
God called the earth in the beginning for a blessing. Everything God created, he created it to be blessed. Hallelujah. You don't have to live the way you're living. You don't have to do without. God wants to bless you in your life. You don't have to live in sin or under the curse. Accept Jesus Christ and you will receive the blessing that comes from heaven in your life. I've met so many people that in their life, they're, they're, so, they're full of troubles and woes and problems. And every time they turn around, something bad's going wrong. Nothing works out. They can't get nothing going right. And just, they're just a failure through life. God didn't call us to be that way. Sin causes you to be that way. Jesus came to reverse that for you. He came to bless you and turning you away from your sin and turning your heart to God. He came to bless you. The rains come that you may be blessed of God and prosper and grow in the Lord so that your life is not filled with turmoil. And trouble and strife all the time. But that you're blessed. You're blessed when you get up. You're blessed when you lay down. You're blessed when you're sleeping. And you're blessed when you're awakened. You're blessed when you're coming in. And you're blessed when you're going out. Hallelujah. You're blessed everywhere and every place. You're blessed in everything you do, everything you put your hand to do. You're blessed. Jesus is the blessing in your life. That's why he came to bless you. For what reason? Why does he want you to be blessed? The only thing Satan's going to sin's going to do to you is destroy you. But God blesses you because He's waiting. He's waiting. He's watching. He's molding and making. He's shaping. He's growing. He's watching. He's pruning. Sometimes that pruning hurts. Okay. Yes. Cut me here, Lord. Okay, Lord. Oh, that hurt. Oh, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's okay, Lord. Mm, that hurt. That's for my own good, I know. Lord says, I got to take that away from you. Okay. Do you have to? Yeah, I got to. So he cuts it away. He's pruning us. He's watching. For what reason? Think about that. Think about that. There's a purpose for everything God does. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That'll make you glad. That'll make you rejoice. Oh, it'll make you shout glory, hallelujah, from your soul. Knowing that there's a purpose for the reason why God is doing what He's doing in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we're not just living for the sake of living. If only in this life we have hope in Christ, we are most miserable. Huh? If, that's only, if, if we only have hope in this life, we are of all men most miserable. Why is it that people are looking for so much hope in this life? They're looking for so many good things to happen in this life. They're wanting to mount up treasures and, and, and money and possessions in this life more than anything. As if that's what life is all about. But your riches will fade away. Your possessions will perish. Everything in this world is going to pass away. But what God is doing in your heart will live forever. 
what God is fashioning you to be, what he's growing you up to be, will endure forever. Those pretty little tomatoes will never rot. That pretty corn will never get moldy. Huh? Whatever it is you are, you are the planting of the Lord. And He's raising you up. He's raising you up. As long as you're in this earth, your roots go down and you come up. And one day, you're just going to come right on up and just keep going. <laughs> and you're going to leave your roots behind. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah! You're not going to be growing in the earth anymore. You're going to be swept off into glory. Why am I living for God? What, what's the purpose for being a Christian? What is this all about? You think about what I'm saying. What is this all about? Every time you go to church and sit with the saints, it's all about something. Every time you open your mouth for the Lord, every time you do anything for as your life as a Christian, it is for something. And all the while, the Lord of the fields, the master of the house, is waiting. You ever think about that? The Lord is waiting on me. Amen. He's waiting. And every time there's a change made in us, we hear something. A change. Something gets a hold of us and changes us. Oh, I got a new revelation. Oh, glory to God. And you just feel so happy and enjoy. You're like a plant that's growing. It's real happy. It's a happy plant, you know. I mean, I mean, I mean, grow stuff. You ever grow things, flowers or, or vegetables? Do you ever go out in there and sing to it? Y'all yeah. heard of women and, and men singing to their plants, <laughs> playing music to the plants. God is singing sweetly to your souls. Yes. And when God sings something sweet to your soul, it makes you so happy. You lift your limbs up high and boy, you've never been so pretty in all your days when the Lord begins to sing and make you happy. Amen. Amen. And what is he doing? Is he doing that just so just to make me happy here? Is that that the whole purpose? No. He got something good in store for you. Something wonderful waiting. For you. He's waiting for you. Now you think about that. Instead of I'm waiting on the Lord and I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord and the Lord's going the Lord is waiting for you. Yeah. yeah. He's watching you, waiting. How's he doing today? How's he look today? You got things going good, the others are going pretty good there. Yeah, you're looking good. Oh, I see something there. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> now that looks a lot better. <laughs> Lord. See? Do you see that? We are the planning of the Lord and He's waiting, watching upon us. He 
taking care like a good farmer, a good husbandman. He's the Lord over his own fields. And he's watching. Need a little water here. Need a little rain. Hallelujah. The former and the latter rain. Well, let me say this before I close. It's like the old song. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. That's good enough for me. It was good for our fathers. It was good for our fathers. <laughs> it was good enough for our fathers, and it's good enough for me. <laughs> Amen. If the rain in those days was good for them, it's good today. Whatever happened then, it's good enough for right now. Hallelujah! What God did 2,000 years ago is still good today. The rain that came down then is coming down now. The blessing that came from heaven then is here today. God is blessing us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Former and the latter rain together. The word of God that was spoken then, it must be spoken now. What God has promised then, praise God, is still good today. Everything Jesus said 2,000 years ago is still ringing true today. You can throw away all the other books. You can, throw, you can get rid of all the other teachers and the philosophers. Whatever Jesus said is still good today. What does the church need today? It needs the very word of Jesus today. It doesn't need to hear the word of men. It needs to hear the word of the Lord. It needs the spirit of God to move in their hearts. We don't need a program. We don't need a... We need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. After all, we are the planning of the Lord. And I need His blessing on me. Amen. So when somebody asks, how you doing, Brother Bob? I'm she asked me that this morning. <laughs> I'm blessed. <laughs> Stand with me, everybody. <laughs> well, I'm blessed. And I know that I'm blessed because of Jesus took control of my life. Well, I'm blessed. And I know that I'm blessed because He promised me a new life. Well, I'm blessed because He walks with me and keeps me wherever I go. If you happen to ask me, how are you, my friend? I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. One more time now. Well, I'm blessed, and I know that I'm blessed because Jesus took control of my life. Well, I'm blessed, and I know that I'm blessed. He promised me a new life. Well, I'm blessed because He walks with me and keeps me wherever I go. If you happen to ask me, how are you, my friend? Well, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. The angels might ask the Lord, Father, how's your crop growing? It's doing real good. Michael might come to the Father and say, Lord, is it time? Not quite yet. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'll let you know when the time is right. Thank God He gave you time. Oh, hallelujah. Yes.
Thank God he gave you time. So don't waste it. Don't neglect it. Don't set it aside. Know that the Father has given you time. Time to grow. Time to prosper. Time to be all that He wants you to be. Do you feel the rain? Yes, hallelujah. Is He showering His blessings on you this morning? If you don't feel it, you need it. Lord, bless Your people this morning. Let the rains of Your blessings fall upon us. Yes. Rain upon us one more time, Lord. Let us feel your presence. Times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus, whom the heavens must receive until the restitution of all things. His blessing on you today is so that He can gather you up to Himself. Yes. Lord, I want to be blessed. But well, if you want to be blessed, get ready to go because you're going to leave this world. <laughs> if you want to be blessed and you want to grow in the Lord, get ready because you're going to leave this world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord, I'm getting ready. I'm ready. Hallelujah. Sometime I felt like we could pull these roots and get, get on the path. <laughs> Come on, Lord. Get me out of here. <laughs> Lord, so just hold your britches, boy. I'll get to you. I'll come when the time is right. You just stay right where I put you. You, please, you go ahead and grow right where I planted you and don't complain. Everything's looking good. It's going all right. Don't mess everything up. Just keep growing. Amen. And when the time is right, I'll pluck you up. I'll pluck you up out of here. Are you ready to be plucked up? Yes. Raise your hands up. Say, Lord, pluck me up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only those who love the Lord can say truly, Lord, come and pluck me up out of here. Hallelujah. I'm ready to go. Do with me what you will. I'm yours. I'm your vessel. Mold me, make me. Do with me what you will. Help me to be all that you want me to be, Father. Without you, I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. I am only here because you put me here. What do you want of me, Lord? Lord says, hold fast. Stand still. And see the salvation of God. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, you open your mouth and I will fill it. Open your mouth and I will fill it. This is a great work that God is doing. Sometimes, sometimes, I got to say this, I'm going to shut up. It's hard for me to shut up. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that little lamb walking around inside of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, praise God. We're all a part of a great thing here. <laughs> and this is a bigger man than Biden's man. <laughs> world. It's bigger than anything that man can do. It's what God is doing and has been doing it down through the ages. 
He's brought you and me in. And we're all a part of what God is doing. So never complain. Never despair. God is waiting on you. He's watching you. Look to the Lord as the flowers look to the sun. Look to Him. Look to the sun. And you will grow towards the sun. Father, I thank You this morning. Oh, I thank You for what You're doing in this earth. Thank You for Your many blessings that You have poured out upon us. That we may grow. That You may get us ready for the time to come. For the time to come. I am Yours, Lord. Do with me what You will. Bless me. Water me. Feed me. Gather me. Keep me. Be with me, Lord. I know you will. You haven't forgotten me. You haven't let me go. I'm still growing as you planted me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, God bless you. Anybody here this morning?